they're playing, that would be LeBron, AD, and the Lakers, the defending champs. Max, the purple and gold, what's on their list? Look, the truth is, people sleep on what Rondo did for them last year. Playoff Rondo is gone. He is real, but he is gone now. They have to hope for a playoff Schroeder. I mean, Schroeder's an upgrade in the regular season by far. But that doesn't mean he can play like Rondo plays in the playoffs. And if he can't, and the Nets are there, that could actually spell doom for the Lakers. Playoff Schroeder is what they have to hope for. Listen, all they got to hope for is for LeBron James to remain the ageless wonder he is. 35 years of age, turning 36 this Wednesday, uh, 18th season in the NBA, fresh off of leading the league in assists while averaging 25 a game. This brother's on another level, make no mistake about it. As long as LeBron is the ageless wonder he is, the only person Dennis Schroeder has to worry about is Dennis Schroeder. He don't act right. He don't shoot right. It ain't going to matter. LeBron will make up for it with AD. Well, I strongly believe that the Lakers need to be hoping and praying that Kyle Kuzma finally finally learns how to play the game of basketball the right way. Look, when he gets hot, we know that he could score. But passing, him making plays, him being a liability on the defensive end. I'm looking for Kyle Kuzma to show some growth, show some maturity. So if I'm the Lakers, that's what I'm wishing and banking and hoping and praying on is that Kyle Kuzma learns how to play the game of basketball the right way. Stephen A., uh, Zion in the Pelicans in the Heat. Come Good. It's not enough for him to be an all-star. Jimmy Butler has greatness written all over him. He just needs to deliver it on a night-in, night-out basis in terms of his aggression. We know he's going to defend. We know he's a rough rider. We know he's not scared of anybody. But he needs to be in complete attack mode to ascend to a level where we're, start to, where we're talking about him more consistently in the fashion we talked about him during the NBA Finals when he got out of the heat to two victories. He was absolutely stellar. I think they need to see more of that from him. I actually think Butler is kind of maxed out what he can do, which is at a very high level. He's a high-level all-star. I think he needs a crime partner who's also great, not just good. Dragic is good. They have a lot of good players. Bam is very good, you know, one of the among the best bigs. But I'm talking about a dude who can go get you a bucket at an all-star level to go with Jimmy Butler, I think that guy is Tyler Hero. I think the Heat have to hope that Tyler Hero, who was a 20-year-old rookie last year, continues ascending into a star, like a legit all-star player, which I think he's capable of. And if they get a guy like that, if that guy could become an all-star, look out for the Heat. I agree with you both, but I, you know, I got a soft spot for the bigs, and I think it's Bam out of the Bayou. I think with Bam keep getting better, as he keeps getting better every single year, it's time for him to up his game even more. And I'm talking about his points per game. We know that he could defend at a at an elite level. We know that he could rebound and block shots. We know he runs the floor. He does all those things well. But he's going to have to up his points per game from 17 points to about. 23 points and he's capable of doing that. I strongly believe that Bam is a top five big in this league and if the Heat are going to take that jump, he has to be that big time player to be that dynamic duo to pair up with Jimmy Butler. All right, up next, guys, we got Miami's opponent. You just saw Zion and the Pelicans. They'll be in action. Max, what should be at the top of their wish list? Oh, oh. This is a slam dunk, so to speak. Zion's health, period. Zion Williams stays healthy. I, Williamson stays healthy. I love the way people are sleeping on Zion. Just because we've never seen anything like him before. He doesn't look like what came before. So people don't understand. He has MVP caliber talent. He could be the best player in basketball one day. He just needs to stay healthy. He has wiggle to his game for a wide body. He can jump out the gym. He can shoot better than you would think for a guy who looks like him at this stage in his career. He can even, uh, he could do so many things just because, what's this? Is this Charles Barkley or Blake Griffin plus some extra stuff? Well, that guy doesn't sound like the best player in the league. That guy's usually an all-star, but not an MVP. Uh-uh. This dude just has to stay healthy. 
I'm not going to try to add to that. We all know it's about the health of Zion Williamson because he's box office, and that's really what it comes down to. And in terms of the New Orleans Pelicans, he's the face of their franchise. We understand it. A healthy Zion Williamson means a significant upgrade for the New Orleans Pelicans. It's that simple. Well, I have to. I, I don't disagree with you guys, but I'm focusing more so on Lonzo Ball. We know what we what, what you're going to get out of Zion. We know that he's box office. You know what you're going to get out of your first time All Star and your most improved. Uh, player winner from uh, out of Brandon Ingram. Lonzo Ball, the number two pick, he has to step his game up. They need more out of him. He has to be consistent. And I'm not talking about 10, 10, 7, and 7. I'm talking about on the lines of 16, 8, and 5. He has to elevate his game and show us what type of player he's going to be. Is he going to be an all-star type player or is he going to be just a simple role player? That's going to be the difference maker in the New Orleans Pelicans, and I'm focusing on Lonzo Ball. All right, let's move to the second game, starting with Steph and the Warriors. Stephen A., the Dubs, what should be at the top of their wish list this year? To me, to me, at the top of their wish list, other than the health of Klay Thompson, obviously should be the ascension of Draymond yeah. Green. I love my brother Draymond Green. He's a basketball savant, brilliant defensively, knows the game backwards and forwards. But numbers-wise, Dray Draymond Green, he hasn't averaged in double digits the last two seasons. Seven-plus points the season before, eight points last year. He's shooting 28% from three-point range two years ago, 27% last year, or 28% because it's 27.9. I need better from Draymond Green offensively because ultimately you know what as brilliant as he is as a basketball player his knowledge is IQ etc etc ultimately to get guys to listen to you even more you got to produce more effectively and offensively I need more from him moving forward that I need I need to see more from him offensively that's it uh, under the tree the Warriors they need shooting 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 isn't that crazy the Golden State Warriors need shooting, but there's no clay there anymore. Obviously, KD's not there anymore. And what did they, what did they have? Who do they have playing big minutes? Guys like Wiggins, Wiseman, like Kelly Oubre. Like, all these guys are athletic and can play to one degree or another. You know what none of them do? Even average for their position? Shoot. They don't have a single average shooter for his position. Uh, on the, in the starting rotation or really in on the bench in the rotation. Pascal, lots of good players, zero shooting. And uh, there are different ways to score, but shooting sure helps, and it makes it harder to score in those other ways when you can't do it. They need shooting, shooting, shooting. Well, I think the, the Golden State Warriors need Andrew Wiggins to elevate his game. They're not asking him to be the number one option. They're not asking him to be the number one pick. They're just asking him to be a, a Robin to Steph Curry while Klay Thompson is out. And I know he's capable of doing it. A career, uh, uh, he's averaged 20 points throughout his career. And that's all they need from him is 20 to 22 points. And I understand you saying shooting max, but it's other ways to, to get buckets than just knocking down three-point shots. Slash he can knock down shots when it's when it's when when he's when he gets going, but he has to be consistent. And I think if the Golden State Warriors plan on making making the playoffs in the Western Conference, Andrew Wiggins is going to have to elevate his game and not not have to be the number one option because that's Steph Curry. But he's going to have to give them twenty plus a night. All right, let's get to the team they face. That would be the reigning MVP who just got paid, Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Bucks. What should be at the top of their wish list? Max? A time machine so they could go back in time and convince Miritich to not go to Europe. <laughs> so they could go back in time and sign Malcolm Brogdon. Whether or not they saw him in, in their long-term future, he becomes an asset that they could move, match up salaries, bring in a dude like Chris Paul when he's available. No disrespect to Drew Holiday. And who says you can't have both? Because they can both play off the ball. So that they can shut up long enough for the Bogdanovich deal to go through and they could add the shooting and the playmaking to the backcourt that they need. The fact is, 
the new CBA, as Adam Silver told Stephen A. Smith on this show a couple days ago, is working as intended. The Supermax, people aren't turning it down. $225 million, you're not bouncing. You know, if you think you even have a shot. So they still have Giannis, but they have a much less uh, of a chance for a championship because of those mistakes they've made in the recent past. I don't think it's that complicated. I think what they need more than anything is consistent perimeter shooting from Giannis Antetokounmpo. Remember, come playoff time, you back off this dude. You make sure that you do what you can to patrol the paint and try to keep him out as best as you possibly can and try to turn him into a jump shooter because he's a minimal threat from that position. And as a result, that's why you end up losing four straight in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Toronto Raptors a couple of years ago. It's why you end up getting bounced in five games in the semifinals to the Miami Heat because ultimately if they're able to minimize you or patrol you to some degree by, by making you shoot jump shots and that's not what you can do it hurts the rest of the team he is the two-time reigning league MVP he averages 30 we know how formidable he is particularly in the open court playoff basketball you get back on defense you force him to shoot perimeter shots if he can't do it they can't win he needs to become a better shooter from the perimeter, a better threat, helping to spread the floor for other people as well. That's what they need most. Well, you know, the thing about the Milwaukee Bucks is, is that I strongly believe that they have a pretty damn good starting five. A starting five that can match up with any starting five in the NBA. Now, what I do think that they need the most is who's going to be that guy off the bench to give them that 15 to 16 points a night, occasionally give them 20 off the bench. And I think that guy might be Bobby, uh, Bobby Portis. He's an underrated player in the league. Don't get enough credit for what he brings to the table he can get buckets when they when they want to go small and move Giannis to the five and stretch the floor with him at the four he's capable of coming in and providing good minutes so I'm looking at Bobby Portis a hell of a pickup for the Milwaukee Bucks I just want to see him come in off that bench and be what Karis LeVert is going to be for the Brooklyn Nets All right, to the Celtics, guys. Uh, Jason Tatum will be in action when the Nets come to town. Stephen A., what should be on the top of Boston's Christmas list this year? A healthy Kimber Walker. You need him in the lineup. You need him with that crossover, with those ball handling skills, with his perimeter play, particularly his ability to hit shots in the clutch from the perimeter, which helps spread the floor for Boston and gives Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum that much more room and that much more makes them that much more of a threat to operate. Kemba Walker is a key to these guys right now. And I know what I said about him earlier and all of those things apply, particularly when you're going up against a team like Brooklyn. But Kemba Walker is no joke. He can put the ball in the hole. We saw what he did in carrying the Charlotte Hornets franchise for all of those years. He was that guy. If he's any semblance of that guy for Boston, they obviously become far more formidable. The number one thing they should be wishing for is a healthy Kemba Walker. Well, I was going to say they need a contractor, a good windows guy. You know, like if you want to get more light in the room, you expand the window because they need to expand their window. I thought a couple days ago because the Nets have come up in the world because Daryl Morey's in Philly now. They're coming up because of Milwaukee, what Kendrick Perkins just told you about Milwaukee. But I got to tell you the truth. After watching Jalen Brown play, I think what they really need is to hope that Jalen Brown is as good as Jason Tatum. That that's the real competition, that those two push each other. Because the distance between 1 and 1A one is not what I thought it was. Jalen Brown, if he's really this dude that we saw game one, the Celtics are a problem. I agree with you, Max. Uh, Jalen Brown is a rising star, and it is 1A, 1B with him and Jason Tatum. And Jalen Brown showed us flashes last year in the bubble. He was arguably the most consistent player for the Boston Celtics in the playoffs. And now with Kimber Walker being hurt, Gordon Haywood moving on, the keys are in his hand, the ball is in his court to show the world that he belongs in a conversation with the All-Stars. But when I look at this Boston team, I want to see what these two vets that they added in the offseason is going to bring to the table. And that is Tristan Thompson and Jeff T. Both of these guys had 
a phenomenal game one in my opinion. Uh, Jeff Teague set the tone off the bench and was a huge spark. Tristan Thompson had 12 and 8 in like 22 minutes in his first debut with the Boston Celtics. So those two guys, especially Tristan Thompson with that championship pedigree, not only am I looking for him to bring that tenacity, that force, that energy, but I'm also looking to him to bring that leadership of being in that locker room and holding guys accountable, bringing guys together, making sure guys don't stray away. So I'm looking at these two guys as veterans that still could produce in this league at a high level to come in and impact this Celtic roster. All right, Max, the C's face off against you-know-who, KD, Kyrie, and the Nets. Brooklyn's coming to town. Max, what should be a top Brooklyn's wish list? Well, under the tree, the Brooklyn Nets should want to see absolutely nothing. Not a damn thing. They have to hope everyone forgot it was Christmas for them. They need no injuries, no setbacks, no trades, no big ideas about bringing in James Harden, no nothing. The Brooklyn Nets should want things to remain exactly as they are because if they do, they are coming out of the East. Well, injuries, the, the first thing to avoid injuries for KD and, and, and Kyrie both to be healthy because we both know with KD's Achilles and Kyrie's right shoulder, obviously those were things that served as an impediment to their success last year. But the other thing I think to point out is that no distractions from Kyrie. Let him let it make sure he's locked in and focused and ready to do nothing but ball on a supreme and significant level. No distractions from Kyrie. That's what you have. Everything else is in place. You're absolutely right. I agree with both of y'all. The biggest key, the biggest wish list, the biggest wish for the Brooklyn Nets is to make sure Karis LeVert stay locked in and be a star in his role. And that's being that guy that comes in off the bench as they six man and being that Manu Ginobili like Steve Nash said in the interview and providing that 20 points a game. All right, let's move to the final game of our slate. Jamal, the Joker, the Nuggets, they're all going to be in action. What should be atop of the Nuggets wish list, Stephen A.? For me personally, if I could just be, if I could just sit up there and bless somebody and give them a miracle, I'd like for uh, Jokic to be able to jump onto a curb. I mean, show some kind of hops, get some kind of athleticism, because he's got everything else. He's got everything else. I mean, the brother can shoot, he can ball, he can pass, he can handle, he, can, he got a big body, he can lean on you the whole bit. He just can't jump onto a curb to save his damn life. I mean, I got more hops than him, and I got a bad knee for crying out loud. Even though the knee's getting better, KP. The point that I'm trying to make is at the end of the day that that's the problem. He can't jump now against against a Anthony Davis. That's just not going to work. That's all I'm saying. If I could do anything, it would be to bless him with just a shred, a speck of, 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 of athleticism, meaning hops, just a little bit. That's what I would do. Well, if I could do anything for the Nuggets, if I, if, I, if I saw something in the stocking that I really needed to see as a Denver Nuggets, you know how you say some guys need to play some defense? I would like, uh, um, I would like a, a Porter Jr. to just even become acquainted with the word defense, just to learn how to pronounce the word defense. If Porter Jr. could even pronounce <laughs> the word defense, the Nuggets could be something. <laughs> Oh, man, y'all in rare form this morning. But, it, look, for the Nuggets, to me, I think it's Gary Harris. We know what we're going to we, we know what you're going to get out of Jamal Murray and Big Jokic. Gary Harris has to be that third option guy. And he has to pick his scoring up. We know on the defensive end he's tough nose. He get into guys, but on the offensive end, he has to be better. He has to give them more of an offensive impact. All right, guys, and let's get to who they're playing. Your favorite, Max Kellerman, Kawhi, and those Clippers. What should be atop the Clips wish list on this Christmas morning? Ain't no surprise here. Paul George got to show up in the playoffs. Go see the Wizard of Oz if you have to. Do whatever you got to do. Paul George shows up in the playoffs. How about for Kawhi to be a leader? That works for me, for Kawhi to be a leader. I mean, l l listen, man, look, you got to be able to inspire. He does his job. He's phenomenal at his job. 
But part of it now is being the face and the leader of the franchise, galvanizing troops, inspiring them. You know what I'm saying? Show some kind of game. I'm quite sure he has a lovely woman in his life. He sat up there. He sit up there and look at her and say, hey, come with me. No. He, 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 was, he, he, did, he did what he could to sit up there and sell himself. I love you. I want you. I need you. Come with me. You know, do something to lead because that is what the Clippers need from Kawhi Leonard, not just his 27 points per game. Yeah, surprisingly, I'm looking at a guy like Nicholas Batum, who's long, who's athletic, oh. who could defend, uh, who could defend multiple positions, and I'm looking for him to have a, a huge impact on this on this Clippers roster, just on the offensive end, being able to knock down shots on a consistent basis. That's all. That's all the Clippers need from him, being able to stretch the floor, knock down shots, and be that elite defender that he's capable of being. All right, let's get to the game I'm probably most looking forward to, guys, and that's going to be Dallas. We just had Mark Cuban on against LeBron in those Lakers. Stephen A., what should be on Big D's wish list this Christmas? To find somebody else so they don't have to depend on Porzingis being healthy. Because if you got to depend on him being healthy, I don't know how much of a I, I, that's not that's not a damn guarantee. Now I know the brother seven three and he can ball. I got mad respect for him. Make no mistake about it. But I damn sure can't depend on him to be healthy. Get some injury that will come his way. Because if there is a brother that is guaranteed to see a doctor, it's him. <laughs> well, um, you might be right, but then in that case, the Mavs just have to pray. Because how do you replace a seven foot three unicorn that can bomb from the outside, take bigs off the dribble, defend the rim, and when he's healthy, defend in space? He is a game changing. Porzingis, the type of dude where GMs in the offseason all have to, in any conference he's in, what are we going to do about that guy? Because you can't match up with him. What do you do about poor Zingas? There's no replacing him. They just have to hope for his health. Well, I think with the Dallas Mavericks, you got to look at Bronson. This kid could flat out ball. He wasn't healthy last year, but right now he's healthy, and the Dallas Mavericks are high on him. And he's a guy that you could throw in and could play on the side of Luka because he don't need the ball in his hands to be effective. He's a walking bucket. He pro he provides that, that, that scoring impact off the bench. So I'm looking at Bronson to have a hell of a year and have a huge impact with the Dallas Mavericks. All right, let's get to the team they're playing. That would be LeBron.